If playing Tezzeret is wrong, I, I don't want to be right. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Legacy video, and today Craig has asked me to play Legacy Tezzerator. So Tezzeret Agent of Bolas came out in Mirrodin Besieged, like beginning of 2011 or something like that, and was quickly adopted into these sort of fringe artifact prison decks at the time focusing around Ensnaring Bridge, Chalice of the Void, and those sorts of prison cards, Tezzeret offered a lot for one card. It offered card advantage in its plus one, it offered relevant protection and large bodies for the minus one, and in the case of you having Ensnaring Bridge and being able to sit there and bide your time, the ultimate was a potential game-winning ability or at the very least, a game-stabilizing ability, and it can happen as soon as the next turn. And Tezzeret saw a respectable amount of legacy play. I'm never really going to claim that it was one of the best decks at the time or anything like that, but it was the sort of thing that you'd be a little bit excited when you saw it on SCG coverage one week, or something of that general nature. So... The general nature of artifact-based decks have shifted greatly in Legacy due to air quotes recent printings, but it's really been the last five years or so, where cards like Emery, Psy, Kappa Cannoneer have kind of funneled you into a different direction for artifact decks. And I want to start this portion of the video by taking a look at what Craig originally submitted. So this is Craig's original submission, which I think has a bit of an identity crisis, which I'm going to try to fix. So issues that I have with the originally submitted decklist, I think starts here. In Soul Artifact, at its core, belongs in an aggro deck. This is the sort of thing that you want to supplement uh, early aggressive creatures, uh, maybe Patchwork, Automaton as a good example of that. It's very cute with indestructible things, but Legacy is a Swords of Plowshares, Leyline Binding format, where an indestructible creature is not necessarily unstoppable in this format. And we also live in the Orcish Bowmasters world, where your opponent can get two chump blocks for one mana, so this is a little bit rough. And this is supposed to conceptually power up cards like Vault Scourge, but Vault Scourge is best in aggressive decks that have cranial plating, which this deck doesn't have. So this deck was trying to be this 4-mana Planeswalker control deck list while also trying to commit some number of cards to this early aggressive game plan but also having enough artifacts endgame that we can have all of these draw twos. And I think this is a good example of spreading yourself too thin. This deck is trying to have its cake and eat it too. You'll notice that this deck has 10 true 4-drops, and Thought Monitor, even with a reduced cost, is still probably in this general range. So let's say that this is ballpark like 14 4-drops. We don't have that much acceleration. Like, we have the Ancient Tombs, we don't have City of Traders, we don't have Lotus Petals, we don't have Emery to recur Lotus Petal. I think this deck had kind of a confused identity and was trying to do too much. In addition, I think some of these cards just weren't legacy power level. Like, the Scrap Heap Scrounger is cute if you can do some, uh, like, sacrifice, bring it back stuff. Like, okay, you can turn it into a base 5-5, five, five. but I think, like, the Scroungers, the Vault Scourge, the Insole Artifacts, and the Tezzeret, the Schemers, all kind of end up being below Legacy Power level, while Karn the Great Creator is only two cards in this deck, but sets up for a nine-card sideboard wishboard. And I think, ultimately... 
if I played this deck as submitted, I, I think I would just get absolutely pounded. And so I spent the last half an hour or so researching, well, what, peop what are people doing in Tesserator decks? And there aren't a lot of Tesserator decks out there. Maybe for good reason. But I did find some neat tech. Akul Pakul, or something approximating that pronunciation, first among equals. A legendary human advisor, 1-5, big booty, at the beginning of each player's end step. That is each player's, not your own. If an artifact entered the battlefield under your control this turn, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the other into your graveyard. So this is sort of like a planeswalker that activates once-ish per turn cycle. And this is a way to get some card advantage while also fueling the graveyard and giving you a little bit of selection. This was a card that I was pretty excited about when I saw it. So this got me to work on a slight rebuild, focusing on a more controlling build that also has a little bit more mana ramp. And here's the list that I've put together. The general idea, the core of being a Tezzeret, Karn, Scion of Urza deck is still here. But I think the most like fundamental thing that I'm doing is I am shifting the curve of the deck list this way. And I'm doing so by adding a little bit more of an early game package. We're going to have some Lotus Petals and just a couple Emery's to recur them, as well as a few other zero-cost artifacts so that we can turn on Mox Opal consistently in the early game. As we want to get to the 4-drop mana spot as many times as possible and as quickly as possible, I've added in a pair of Demir Signet, and a few pieces of spot removal in both the main deck and sideboard. So the goal here is to have a higher density of early plays that are going to kind of force our opponents to interact, so that when we do get to 4 mana, our 4 drops are more likely to resolve. I am going to keep some amount of the end game of Thought Monitor, which can be recurred by the Emery's that I've added into the deck. And I'm also going to add a couple of Kappa Cannoneers, because these like Baleful Strix and Chalice of the Void and stuff that are going to be sitting on the board anyway can be very good at fueling these sorts of cards. And this is just a standalone card that can win a game of Magic. A fundamental difference between my list and what Craig originally submitted is that this list is playing overlapping effects that are similar rather than maxing out on anything. So Emery and the first among equals here, uh, very, very Roman idea, by the way. Uh, for those of you that know the word print caps or have come across that before, seems, uh, seems like those vibes. These are ways of getting like early to mid game card advantage and things that my opponent might need to like interact with before I actually get to these four drop slots. And the goal is for us to bury our opponents in these artifact-based synergies with Urza Saga tokens and Karn Scion of Urza tokens. The sideboard is, I think, reasonable. We've got Tormod's Crypt and Leyline of the Void for combo deck lists, as well as some decent counterspell options. We're going to have some more Blue Elemental Blasts and Dismembers for the Sticker Goblin, like Turbo Muxus deck, and then a few Urza Saga Tutor targets. And we'll kind of see how this ends up feeling overall. We'll see if I put together something reasonable, or if we're still going to absolutely get wrecked. If you like what you see today, please consider checking out Cool Stuff Inc. and using promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order. Let's battle. Hey, Phil from the future here. The best round of this league is easily round five and features this card popping off really hard if you have time for one round that's the one okay urza saga mox opal lotus petal emery turn one replay lotus petal on turn two i can activate an urza saga or develop my mana this is a little awkward it can be improved a lot by another land or a zero-cost artifact, so I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this one, despite the awkwardness. Woohoo! Don't Blood Moon me. Oh, hey. Now I don't have to commit to the Urza Saga on turn one. 
I think I like that. So we'll go yaw, yaw, yaw. Metalcraft is on. Yaw. I can sack the Lotus Petal, use it for Signet, and play another Signet. I think that's fine. And I have a lot of mana on turn two. On turn two, I can play Urza Saga, Karn, and Emery, as long as I filter my mana properly. Oh, it's Painter. Um, Goblin Welder's a little weird against my deck. That card's really fucking good. <laughs> All right, let's, let's filter this mana now and make sure that I don't accidentally not have blue mana. Booyah. Drop Emery. Gives me a lot of weird things in Graveyard. Am I fine with trying to put my opponent's Goblin Welder on defense? Or is this just card advantage? Let's put them on defense. I don't think my opponent would, like, miss how good just turning Construct Token into a land is, but I've been, I've been wrong before, so. I was also gonna kind of mess with my Emery, huh? Oh, never mind. What Emery? And an Engineer. So this probably puts a Painter in the yard, and I am in somewhat real danger of getting comboed off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. So now I just don't aggro out my opponent before they combo off. Like, on their turn, they get a Grindstone, they have three mana, they activate Grindstone, they weld Grindstone for Painter, and I'm just dead. So let's try to find something to do about that. Eh. I'll go one... Filter mana through this, play this, the Vault of Whispers ETB will end up triggering this. I'll ship in for six. Opponent's at 14. Uh, and I, th I think we just get goldfished just a little bit before I can stop my opponent. Um, I'll take the Force of Will. Yeah, it doesn't do anything yet, but it's maybe about to do something. If things get a little weird, I want to represent having mana. Um, I'm not going to just like tap out and play around a pithing needle. Um, three mana, activate grindstone, bring in painter. This is not a relevant difference. Yeah, so there's the weld in. Everything is black, not blue. So this mills me out. I die when I draw a card in my upkeep. Uh, it's a shame. I was about to draw another card with this. I didn't get a chance to do something like a Pithing Needle. We fall just a little bit short in terms of speed. Haywire Might and Pithing Needle can come in. Dismembers are good. Tormod's Crypt is fine. Blue Blasts are fine. So this is going to be a case of, like, what do I want to board out? The Chalices probably aren't great. They do things. But I don't know that I am excited about trying to stop Rebs. It's fine. It doesn't really stop the whole Grindstone plan. My opponent can just find one off Urza's Saga anyway. I think I still want Force. These expensive blue cards become a little bit less attractive. This is a total of seven cards, so I would need one more cut. The Welding Jar... The Welding Jar could probably go. Am I okay playing a control game? This is awkward. I don't have anything for the Force of Will. I don't have True Acceleration for the Urza Saga. I think I've got better sixes. Uh, this is fine. So it's just Ancient Tomb, Ancient Tomb, Karn, Karn Minus. If I get rid of the Dismember, I can Ancient Tomb, Mox Opal, Petal, Play Kappa Cannoneer on turn 2, back it up by Karn on turn 3. That's a fast goldfish. Let's try that. Keeping the Dismember is a little rough if I am also going to keep double Ancient Tomb. So I think I'm good. 
I don't think I need to play out this sort of stuff the first time around. Uh, it's a little awkward that my opponent is now holding up a Red Blast. Fuck, another Ancient Tomb. I think since my opponent is holding up Red Blast here, I don't play Kappa directly into Red Blast and I'll Karn instead. And it's a little awkward if my opponent Lightning Bolts the Karn. But my opponent has more Blasts than lightning bolts in their deck i could plus oh wait no this is only a my no it is a minus two i could plus i am i am just gonna make the construct though lightning bolt be damned no oh, immediate lightning bolt that's nice uh fury could still happen like that is a reasonable thing my opponent could play it is an engineer so this threatens the same line that happened last time but this requires an extra mana because it requires mana to bring the painter back it's also possible that my opponent may feel like they're under enough pressure that they get something like an ensnaring bridge instead although i didn't see that this time tezzeret i'm always doing one of these this is a 4-4 four four. now which one of these am i playing i guess if i decide on kava near i should have waited until it was in play to do the construct token thing let's tezzeret Tezzeret provides a whole lot of power because this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact I control but does not have other base power and toughness other than that so I can turn this into a five five and just whack for eight and then be representing uh, potentially a lethal attack next turn depending on how exactly things go with my draw steps I could also just plus but with triple ancient tomb plussing here is a little awkward so my plan is next turn plus card try to get a zero drop artifact that i can put into play tezzeret minus attack with three giant bodies and really put the pressure on my opponent's leg fuck okay it's not it's not both of them dying that could have been worse i thought i was losing both of those construct tokens and that also meant that i was going to lose the card uh it's still bad but my heart skipped a beat when I thought I was losing both at the same time. I'm not really presenting lethal anymore. Ox Opal is also not on, which is inconvenient. I wonder which one. Okay, I get the Vault. Kappa Cannoneer is something that I can get back next turn. So this turns on Mox Opal. Might die. Now that Mox Opal is on... I'm doing this. I guess I'll just Tezzeret plus first before I commit the mana then. Because if I animate Vault of Whispers, it has Summoning Sickness. A Shadow Spear? That's not bad. The rest can go back in any order. So I will drop the Kappa Cannoneer. It scales up. Ow. Drop the Shadow Spear. I don't have another mana to equip it. That scales this up, though. I am potentially attacking for lethal next turn, but I might just die if my opponent has access to a little bit more natural red mana. So they can get Grindstone with this. They have three mana to Grindstone activate. They will need another mana to activate Painter. So they need another natural land drop here, which unfortunately they do have. Um, so just like last time, we kind of get goldfished by Painter here on turn four. And I will concede. GG's. Uh, two things that I want to note here. Number one, if I keep the Dismember in the opening hand, I can slow down what my opponent is doing here. But it probably doesn't ultimately stop it. And number two, I did deal 12 points of damage to myself with this hand. So like, pitching the Dismember was probably correct. Today's video is sponsored by Eminence Gaming. They have run a ton of tournaments at this point, and you might know them from the competitive EDH scene, but their command tower software can be used for all sorts of different formats. It's really easy. You can even just give your players a QR code in order to get them all of their pairings and everything that they can need. I really love this software as a player, and you should talk to your stores about it. Consider using it. It's cool. I'm one mana source away from making this hand work uh, with another artifact so that Mox Opal is on, this hand is pretty good. But with no ability to cast either Baleful Strix or Emery, 
Uh, I think this one has to go back. Our opponent says hello from Brazil. I say hello back. I want to take some mulligan as well. So we've got our ETB tapped land here. This is probably fine though. I'm going to keep this one, I think, pitching one of the copies of Urza's Saga. Opponent going to five. Could be scary. Let's see what we're looking at. Uh, Cavern of Souls. Are we going Goblin? We're going Goblin. Okay. So I know what we're playing against now. Uh, the Mox Opal is not a great draw. Chalice of the Void is not a particularly strong card. I can play a Chalice on zero to turn on Mox Opal on turn one. I don't think I am interested in doing that. It lets me play Emery on turn one. How many zero drops am I shutting off? I'm not traditional eight cast. It's not actually that many cards. I think this matchup is so fast that this is correct. Okay, cool. I hit a Kappa Cannoneer and a Demir Signet. That's quite good. So I can continue to develop my mana, and the Kappa Cannoneer provides me something that can be a game ender. In theory, a Chalice of the Void on something like three could be interesting, but, you know, Cavern. Damage report. Oh, that's so reasonable. <laughs> Remember when, like, Goblin Ravel Master was something that had everyone, like, shitting their pants? <laughs> I remember. The Lotus Petal draw is awkward, since I chaliced on zero. Is this a cast? No. ETB. Understood. So I'm going to do this. I am just going to play a big booty blocker and accept the fact that I don't maximize Emery value here. So I think my hope is that my opponent kept a weak five card hand and there is not just like looming Muxus. We're, we're hoping for mid-range beats over there. I think I can keep up with mid-range beats. My Shadow Spear is in the main deck. So I can conceptually make a large Urza Saga token and go from there. Ow, fuck this guy. Oh, that's so good. So we'll see if my opponent flings before blockers. Okay, they do. So I can block and absorb four points of damage, only taking two. My opponent, Tezzeret. Tezzeret's not the best. I think I sorcery speed activate this and make the token so that I can trigger this at my end step. Uh, one, two, three, four artifacts. Thought monitor costs three. Costs two after Urza's Saga. Uh, yeah, I'll take Thought Monitor. Um, this math is going to end up being a little bit different due to broadside potentially impacting combat in a negative way for me. Oh, they won't stop coming. Alright, so this is the scary turn. Oh, fuck, it's the high roll. It's all six. It is a goblin war chief into a goblin ringleader. Uh, <laughs> revealing some gas. I imagine that I don't stabilize from here. I'm not going to do the math. I'm going to let my opponent attack and, like, whatever fucking happens, happens. But the Rabble Master gets huge. My opponent can just, like, throw something, kill the Construct token, and then none of their stuff dies. Yeah. And that's perfectly reasonable. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, assuming that I want to keep this around, which I think I do. But I'm not really sure what I'm doing to win from here. We don't have very many zero drops in my deck, but I sure drew a lot after playing that chalice. I think at this point, especially knowing that another broadside is coming, I'm just dead and I'm not going to spend any more time thinking through it. We're going to take some blue elemental blasts, some dismembers, a pithing needle is probably reasonable. I don't think I want the might. 
Counter anything, it does. Uh, I'll consider this. It's awkward, but I'll consider it. Like, more counter spells is not the best versus Cavern of Souls. First thing I'm going to do is take out my four copies of Chalice of the Void. Those are going to become four pieces of interaction. Thought Monitor is relatively slow. Let's get those out for a Pithing Needle and a Rebuke. And then I decide if I want to cut one card for another Metallic Rebuke. Tazeret can gain life and produce five fives. It's a little slow for the matchup. I could well, I could like get rid of Welding Jar or a Metallic Rebuke and be okay with that. This hand is just going to be too slow for the matchup, unfortunately. Well, Mulligan. What? Uh, it's a keep. Am I throwing back second Urza Saga or Vault of Whispers is kind of the question. Turn one Saga, turn two, activate, turn three, activate. I probably keep the Vault of Whispers. I'm probably going to use mana to activate and equip a Shadow Spear. It's kind of conceptually how I see this going. And we're going to leave the artifact in play for Urza Saga token size. We are hoping to dodge a Cavern of Souls. Do I counter it? I don't think I do. I think I let this one resolve and counter the thing that comes next. It's awkward if my opponent high rolls and plays multiple cards. Um, I think I force this one, though. I'm fine leaving my opponent with the 2-2 in play, but I think potentially just having... Oh, nice. There's not a follow-up play. I think having the possibility of forever stopping a Muxus or Broadside or whatever is incredibly important. Uh, we'll pass the turn. Magus of the Moon is real scary right now. This is his second Urza Saga token as well as the Urza Saga search. Both matter a lot. I don't block this. Go to 17. Uh, that's scary, but it's happening. Can take that out on my turn via Dismember, assuming that I'm willing to lose the life, which I probably am. I think I lose the life and pick up Shadow Spear. So like, yeah, yeah, it hurts. I go to nine, attack my opponent for five. Next turn I get to play Vault, equip gain 7, go back to 16. Assuming not the worst this turn, where it's just Sticker Goblin into attempt to go off again. I think I probably win this one. Cool. Oh, that's a weird draw. Um, well, let's do that. Let's do that. I'll go ahead and equip. Attempt to deal 11 damage. Okay, that's a chump. I love to see that. I did gain the life. I am pretty safe at 16 now. I am presenting lethal next turn. We can't get too excited, though, because Ancient Tomb Muxus can absolutely still drag my opponent out of this. Whew. I don't think I'm going to make any play draw differences. Like, there's some tiny things like I could do, like board in the Welding Jar or the Haywire Might. I'm not overly excited about either one of those things, though. Is this hand fast enough? Probably not. I can play a turn 2 Emery. Turn 3 hold a counterspell up. I, I think that's not good enough here. Ooh. Ah. Uh, okay. This at least plays a turn 2 thing with Death Touch. That's not irrelevant. I think I pitch Ancient Tomb and give up on the fastest possible Karn and keep this hand. The Mox Opal becomes very strong. I can play Baleful Strix on turn one some small portion of the time. Uh, but this is spooky. This is just such a blisteringly fast matchup. Oh, fuck yeah. Nice. The Petal and Opal. Don't think it matters which artifact land I play. I'm going to go with Vault of Whispers because Dismember is a thing in my deck. Oh, shit. Okay. That 
turned into a very good turn. And now I get recurring Lotus Petal every turn, and I can actually still turn to Karn despite throwing away my Ancient Tomb. Uh, folks, I'm not going to lie to you. I would say those are the perfects. Like maybe drawing something like a Blue Blast or a Dismember is better, but this is really good. Okay. Rip, turn two Karn. I still have turn three Karn. I can play a Demir Signet from my graveyard, and I'm like perfectly happy doing so. And let's just see how scary things get. Like, Broadside's very good. Matron or Sticker Goblin? In good news, I can keep recurring a Baleful Strix. That's not irrelevant. Yeah, it does get named Sticker Goblin, sure. So, yeah. Target Signet. Play Signet. We're absolutely just holding Baleful Strix back. I don't know what's coming, but it's probably bad for me. So my opponent plays Name Sticker Goblin. They have a minimum of four mana. They have three creatures that they can sacrifice. That's a minimum of seven mana. Could have up to nine mana, not counting more Name Sticker Goblins. So like, Muxus is absolutely on the table. Broadsides are really scary right now. Ringleaders are pretty scary. Battlecry Goblin feels beatable. Oh god, you need more mana? Alright, one goblin down. Okay, so there's the Muxus. They just wanted to keep an extra body in play. That's perfectly reasonable. Whiff? Whiff would be cool. Fuck, there's the broadside. And four more mana from a new name sticker goblin. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay, yeah, sure. So the broadside can throw something like the uh, goblin created from the Battlecry Goblin trigger and kill my Baleful Strix, and then I'm probably just dead on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am at negative four life. Uh, GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. Okay, I don't like this hand. Uh, we just kind of accomplished nothing. Second hand has no mana. We're on five. Five card hand's pretty rough. I'm going to keep it. One Tezzeret always goes back. I always keep these four, and I keep one of these two. Um, let's keep the Tezzeret. Underground Sea, huh? Let's play an Underground Sea mirror. Not super looking to draw four drops. I want stuff for the early game if we're playing against a blue-black combo deck list. I need interaction. Uh, that's fine. This is the land that I would prefer to be wastelanded, I think. This is an artifact, and that matters for a lot of the things in my deck, such as Mox Opal. We'll see kind of where we go from here. We know we're not playing against something like Doomsday anymore. We're fully in, like, the blue-black scam death shadow wheelhouse. Need more mana? That is not mana. Now I'm probably in business once I hit one more land drop, and it seems like my opponent has a reactive hand rather than a proactive hand. Uh, sure. Are you playing around Dark Ritual Bowmaster? Seems like yes. Uh, well, in good news, that's a land. In bad news, it's our one ETB tapped land. So I don't get to Demir Signet this turn. Not the end of the world. Baleful Strix probably not going to be at its best in this matchup. Um, unless my opponent just preemptively plays out Orcish Bowmasters, uh, which they did do. So that's nice. Strix is maybe live. It's possible that it's not. I'd like to be able to play some of my basic spells around days. But this is definitely a hand where, like... Days is going to get something at some point. 
So the question is, what is it getting, not when is it getting something? Or rather, if it is getting something. Two damage is no big deal. Uh, we have managed to dodge a follow-up threat, which is great. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to drop the Signet and Ramp. And I think I will go ahead and offer up the Baleful Strix to either a Bowmasters or a Daze and be perfectly fine with that. Mm, the second Bowmasters is fine. So this pings this immediately. And now I draw my card and I get two pings here, which is not great for me. I was playing it into the Bowmasters, you know, knowing that the Bowmasters could trade with it. Um, I guess I don't need to make this dazable. Uh, my opponent wouldn't daze this. That doesn't make sense. One, two, three, four, five, six. If Karn resolves, I just start making six sixes, and this Orc army token doesn't matter that much. Reanimate. Sure, that's fine. Basic land drop. Four of a kind on underground seas. Pick six, I'm at nine. I think two counterspells fully puts me out of the game, and one counterspell puts me into a terrible position. One, two, three, four, five. Attempt a Karn. Actually, one counterspell might be enough. I take seven on the crackback. I'm at two. If I make a blocker next turn, I still just take lethal. Yeah, that's a Murktide Regent held in hand. If I draw another mana source, I can Karn into Equip Shadow Spear, and that's more interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is bad. Oh, yikes. So that's eight, and then this is lethal. And we're just a touch too slow here. The mulligan to five didn't help. Uh, we, we made it to turn seven, though. Just missing some land drops while also getting wastelanded was a little tough. So Baleful Strix is particularly bad versus Orcish Bowmasters. It's fine versus the other black creatures of that deck. But I probably just cut this. I probably junk Welding Jar. Let's play some removal. I can decide whether or not I want to try to ley line to stop Merktide Regents, or whether or not I want to lean on counter spells to stop that. I think I'm going to lean on Counterspells and the Dismembers to get out of the early game and go from there. These Thought Monitors, like, by the same, by similar logic as to Baleful Strix, are not going to be the best. Maybe I add a Pithing Needle for Wasteland and then play an extra Fluster. I'm not overly excited about Chalice either, but I'm boarding down a lot of things with the words draw a card on it. I've got to kind of keep something somewhere. Uh, this is fine, but slightly awkward. Ancient Tomb. Zero drop. Zero drop. Zero drop. Play my one drop. And then attempt Chalice on one. Which seems like it's going to resolve. Based on the speed that the other things have resolved. And now I'll go ahead and just immediately cash this in, and nice, my opponent's drawing a Brainstorm. And now I am looking to top deck some sort of Planeswalker. See, there we go. Magic is fucking easy, folks. You saw it here first. Hey, stop it. Uh, this is fine. My opponent didn't have a Counterspell last turn, and it's not like Days is randomly up now either. So, yeah, okay, they, they don't have anything. So I will Karn... Uh, my opponent quickly concedes. That was a powerful hand. Let's do that again. That was fun for me. This is a this is a gambling man's hand with another artifact or another land. This hand is quite strong. However, I'm very soft to wasteland, and I have no agency in this game if I draw poorly. I think I'm just going to try to keep something that has more mana. This is this is kind of the other extreme. This one has some interaction. I think I am going to junk the Lotus Petal and keep the secondary land, because Wasteland is one of the spookier things against me right now. I've got some very bad draws right now, like 
force of will in particular is quite bad. I can dismember that in the not too distant future, and that's fine. I can dismember that right now. This is a really weird situation. I can do the six life dismember playing around days to attempt to clear Stalactite Stalker off the board to drop a turn to Karn. I do an incredible amount of damage to myself, but I'm very set up for a win if it works. I think I am willing to gamble that on the draw. I also do get to drop Shadow Spear on one if this does resolve. If it doesn't resolve, I have dealt six damage to myself and my opponent still has a scaling creature in play. There's the Force of Negation. I don't think I am supposed to let my opponent untap and do it on their turn to play around Force of Negation, because then I open up Brainstorm for Force of Will. So I am happy with the way that I have played this. Um, I know this is guaranteed to resolve right now, so I guess I will do it right now. So I take 2, go to 12, I take 4 damage. Fuck. That's so bad. That's so very bad. Um, okay. I'd love to draw another removal spell. As, uh, this is spooky now. And I've boarded out Strix. I guess Menace is, like, a thing anyway. Play the tapped land this turn without it being a detriment, but I do just take three more from this, and the Menace means that my immediate Karn minus won't actually be able to block. So life's bad. Please don't reanimate. Cool. Take three. That scales up. I, I just don't have time to play that card, unfortunately. And I am very near dead. I am one spell of any nature away from dead, I think. Okay, cool. It is not an immediate counterspell. Are we resolving? Damn. I am not sure that I am on outs anymore. Gosh. That's real good. Um, I guess I can draw a new Dismember. That is a Chalice of the Void, so I am dead on board, unfortunately. GG's. This is a bit of a weird one. I think I'm going to go with Keep on this. We can reduce the cost of Thought Monitor very, very quickly. And I have redundant extra mana here. It is usually a pretty good place to be. I'm going to throw the pedal into play. There's two Kappa Cannoneers in the deck that kind of punish me for playing that out. Otherwise, there's some things like Chalice of the Void, Thalia, Archon of Ameria that reward me for playing this out in advance. We're either playing against a Doomsday deck or a Death Shadow deck. And we'll probably find out pretty quickly which one it is. So play this. This costs four mana. I can play Tezzeret, turn Lotus Petal into a Duder, and start bashing. Or I can Thought Monitor. And they do very different things. I think I am interested in dropping Tezzeret immediately. Tezzeret always costs four mana. Thought Monitor gets cheaper and cheaper as this game goes on. That is a counterspell. Pitching a Merktide Regent. So we are against some sort of tempo deck. We'll see if I'm punished for not playing Thought Monitor by my opponent playing Orcish Bowmasters in the next turn cycle. Like, that is a reason to have played the Thought Monitor first. Uh, is that a Street Wraith? That's a Street Wraith. That's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. Uh, however, the uh, follow-up Death Shadow is less OK. It's only a 4-4. Four -four. That's not bad. This probably becomes the starting point for my turn now. Let's keep more reanimates and death shadows from happening. And then go ahead and drop this. That force of will is a touch late. I'm on a two turn clock already. I can technically block this. It doesn't do a lot of good. Um, I'm just going to take this damage. And we'll see if we can maybe combine the Thought Monitor with something else to try to take out one of these bodies in the next turn cycle or so. 
I'm going to force a will the shit out of this Merktide Regent. Absolutely not. Yu-Gi-Oh! Damn it. I'm going to chump block this, go to three, and then be in pretty bad shape, honestly. I can draw a Dismember to answer the Death Shadow, but then I just die to the onboard Street Wraith. So I need to draw, like, another Thought Monitor and, like, Thought Monitor into Dismember or something. That's not going to do it and is a rather cruel draw. Dead. So what do I have for this deck? This might be a time where I go ahead and lay line, like, Merktide Regent and Reanimate together probably makes that good enough. Means I probably put a crypt in here, can consider this, can consider these. Flusters aren't crazy. I have to respect Bowmasters. Welding Jar probably goes. How do we feel about Force of Will? Force of Will is important for a couple of cards like Merktide Regent. If I have a Ley Line, that's less important. But that is an if. I could reasonably cut these and the Force of Wills and try to play like a mid-range Planeswalker control plan, which might kind of be where I'm ending up at. How do I feel about this Tormod's Crypt? Over a Bobble? Maybe over a Bobble. I'm a little unsure about this Leyline situation. Um, yeah, this is, this is fine. Oh, it's mulliganing very quickly here. Oh my god. They are on three. I just end up kind of punking my opponent with a turn one Chalice of the Void. It's like, on three cards, what do you want? Like, land troll reanimate? Like, that's your three. And this stops the most important of those cards? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of where I thought that game was going. And we'll try again. How do I feel about the Urza Saga hand? I think I don't like this one. It has no initial acceleration for the Urza Saga. I don't interact with opposing creatures. I don't play something that must be answered. I'm still relatively soft to Wasteland despite having four lands. Yeah, I think this is going to go back, especially since I have like Leyline of the Void opening hands that can be really good. Let's keep. I think I just pitch the expensive card here and keep the second Emery. I think this hand is quite strong. So we'll lead on Vault Shadow Spear so that my blue source doesn't get wastelanded if my opponent fires off an initial wasteland. Ooh, actually, let's just get this out of the way. I'm perfectly fine with that. No end of turn troll cycle. So we're chilling. So this is kind of neat now because I can play Emery. If Emery gets countered, I can choose to fire off a second Emery if I'm willing to make one of those dazable. Merktide Regent they pitched is not good because of Leyline. I think I just wait a turn on the Emery to play it around Daze and offer up a Shadow Spear to a Daze. This is not a particularly important card, whereas if this Emery doesn't resolve, it's a disaster. Bowboy is fine. I've boarded out some amount of my draw effects believe. Yeah, so I still have the Owls. I still have Baleful Strix, but I boarded out the Thought Monitors, so this is really not that bad. Two damage is nothing. Ooh, opponent opting not to Wasteland. That's dangerous. Probably means something like a Sauron's Ransom is coming at end of turn. This one? Go this one. Play Emery. It would also be in respect of, like, a Fatal Push. We're in play. That's a whiff. Equip Shadow Spear versus Cast Dismember. I think I'll just equip Shadow Spear. And we're chilling. No, Sauron's Ransom. So, my opponent might be specifically holding for Urza's Saga. That's a thing. I, um, the Ponder Shuffles. So I have an active Emery. It's not necessarily doing the most right now. I think I'm okay sending it in combat, though. I have a Dismember for if things get a little weird. 
Cool. I'll pass turn. Swamp cycle. I don't know, maybe I should be holding back like my opponent's deck is a Death Shadow deck after all. I kind of want to use this Dismember to kill an initial Death Shadow. Gonna hard cast a Street Wraith on me? Fatal Push, that's fine. I don't think I Dismember a 1-1 one -one here. Uh, destroy each artifact and creature. Ah, uh, fuck. Damn it. Yeah. So at this point, when I'm about to lose all my lands except the bridge, I probably need to just dismember this while I still have the colored mana. Uh, this is pretty disappointing. Um, but Powder Keg is tech for this very specific sort of matchup. Yeah, that is disappointing. I can't really play this land drop yet. I'm just going to hold it. The wasteland that's just sitting there is rough. Because Urza suck. <laughs> well, fuck me, I guess. Ah, <sighs> good god. Let's move on to the next one. We're not gonna beat this. Okay, this one doesn't quite work in terms of colored mana or a real plan. Let's ship this. Uh, this has no plan other than draw well. I'll, I'll go to five. I'm not the happiest about it. But I think unless I specifically draw Ancient Tomb, this hand is just not competitive. Uh, Seat Mox Opal, don't have Metalcraft. Turn two, hope to draw land, play Demir Signet. This is one, two, three, four... Probably five. Urza Saga Ancient Tomb is better than this. But I think I'm just going to keep this one and hope that it works out. Rather than mulligan further. Because any land and any zero drop turns this into a reasonable hand. And some secondary draws such as Emery keep it in the playable category. Pretty soft to wasteland. And obviously don't have a lot of interaction. Oh, hopefully that's just like a fair green fetch land and everything is fine. So we're doing this again, huh? We're making my zero drop deck put chalices on zero for Metalcraft. Thanks, I hate it. Oh? It was not a fair green fetch land. Oh? Oh? <laughs> sure. This is kind of funny. So my opponent is on the, the Rhinos deck with like Murktide Regents, Shardless Agents, all that stuff. So my opponent produces two 4-4s four here. And then doesn't get to Rhino again. This is now on. Baleful Strix can trade with one Rhino. Nice. Emery Recurring Strix is good. Okay, like I have a real plan. Now, my opponent could just, like, fire ice this Strix out of the way. I take eight, and then I'm immediately in a bad situation again. Assuming that doesn't happen, I could stabilize this game. Are you attacking? No. Okay. I am A-OK -okay with the brakes being pumped. I'd love to draw another land. That's not quite a land. I think I need to develop my mana rather than play the Emery, despite how good the Emery is. I, I, I just think I need to eventually get to this to have something that outsizes the Rhinos, and unfortunately, Demir Signet is not immediately tappable for mana. In case you're wondering why we play Demir Signet, we want to be able to convert pure colorless mana into mana for Tezzeret 100% of the time. That's rough. I played out the Signet, so, you know, we're set back. It's not the end of the world. All right, this time they are coming in. I'll trade, and then we're going to hope to put Emery in play. If I can put Emery in play while also doing Demir Signet, like, that would be cool. Welding Jar. Not exactly amazing, because Chalice. So... I'm going to convert the mana here, and then 
play the Emery. I guess I don't need to convert the mana. This is not a days matchup. But it also doesn't really matter. Uh, that's two Strix in there. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, life's all right. I'm not going to get excited because things like Minsk and Boo and Merktide Regent can come along later. You know, Baleful Strix can still get Force of Willed. Like, there's plenty of things that can go wrong. Uh, bounce spells like Brazen Borrower and Fire Ice and stuff are, like, very much a thing. Okay, there's another threat coming. There's the double fetch. Feels like Merktide based on my opponent's patterns. Why? Why is this happening post-combat instead of pre-combat? Are you just going to hurl the Rhino at my Emery? I guess that's fine. Yeah, that's probably fine. Yep. I am unsure that this is better than just doing it pre-combat and just attacking me for more damage. But I think it wins my opponent the game either way. Goodbye, Emery. I don't know that I'm realistically on any draws here. The mulligan was rough. Now we know how good Chalice on Zero is. But, again, we don't really want to be Chalicing on Zero. Pithing Needle for Minsk and Boo is fine. I can do some, like, Fluster Metallic Rebuke type stuff. And it's fine. The issue with boarding in something like Leyline for Merktide is that it doesn't impact the Rhinos and the Minsk and Boos and stuff. So I don't know that I'm super into that. Welding Jar is interesting, but I kind of want to decrease the number of zero drops I'm going to play if I am going to intend on playing Chalice on zero. Dismembers are kind of mid. I think I'm going to get rid of the Dismembers. They only deal with half of Rhinos. Kind of a third if it's a Shardless Agent. Doesn't always answer Minsk and Boo. Doesn't always answer a lot of their stuff, really. So this can get me Pithing Needle plus a few more counter spells. Luster Storm doesn't answer Minsk and Boo. Stops the Rhino stuff. Eh. This may be where we're at. No. Lotus Petal, Mox Opal. Play Emery off Underground Sea. Throw back Ancient Tomb. Assume that Emery gets me to something meaningful. I think is fine. Um, I think you can play this hand a couple of different ways, though. Like, I think it's also valid to get rid of the Mox Opal and keep Ancient Tomb. Since Emery can be played off Lotus Petal Underground Sea as well. But I conceptually like having access to Mox Opal in this deck. If my opponent forces here, I do think I have to force back. I am kind of all in on the Emery right now. All right. Thanks, I hate it. Uh, let's see how good the Emery hits. Shadow Spear, Lotus Petal, Cannoneer, Strix. I mean, that is four different options. That's about the best that I could hope for. And now we just kind of start to see where it goes. I'd love to draw a chalice or something that allows me to stop the rhinos from coming. Baleful Strix only goes so far in that regard. Saga's cool. Saga's real cool. I can sacrifice the Lotus Petal to put a Baleful Strix into play. I think I'd rather just put Shadow Spear in play this turn and turn on Mox Opal more permanently. Like, I, I want this mana to be dedicated towards Urza Saga, and Emery can work. Uh, no, 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 turn off auto yields. Too late. Um, I can get an equip on Emery there, and it matters for, like, fire ice purposes. Okay, it is a cycle. All right, did not get immediately punished by fire on Emery. Sure. Make Saga token. I think I'll just put another Lotus Petal into play. Cast that. We are trying to make the Rhinos as large as possible. I don't think I give up two Lotus Petal. That's two points of power and toughness on these Saga tokens. I don't think I give that up to cast a Baleful Strix. Game is just not about that right now. 
So on my turn, I can Pithing Needle Minsk and Boo. And that ends up being pretty reasonable. Here comes the first wave of Rhinos. It has multiple Force of Vigors in their deck. Not unexpected. Opponent has 10 power in play. I am going to have more than that. I guess let's take a look at this. Anything else spicy? Uh, it's pretty unlikely my opponent draws a Force of Vigor from here. So we Saga. This is base 5-5, five, five, about to be 6-6, six, six, about to be 7-7, seven, seven, maybe even about to be a little bigger than even just that. So 6-6. Six, six. Let's shut off Minsk and Boo. I just don't want that card coming down. I can attack and trade with a Rhino. I'm not the most excited about that. So I think what I am going to do is cast a Baleful Strix, take a redraw, and then replay Lotus Petal from my graveyard. And I end up with... The same number of artifacts in play, but I end up a card and with a Death Toucher in play. And these Construct Tokens are very good on the defensive. And then next turn, I will have enough power in play that double blocks on these Construct Tokens don't make sense anymore. And potentially I'll also be lifelinking. So you remember how I said it was very unlikely my opponent would have Force of Vigor because I had seen three of them? in exile, uh, or rather on the bottom of the deck. That's just life sometimes, you know? These are down to five fives. I can redeploy this stuff from my graveyard, so like, this is not the end of the world. We were going into this game very much in the control mindset. So this is okay. More rhinos. Sure. You got it. If the Rhinos don't have good attacks, this is not the end of the world. If my Amory gets removed, it's, it's a different story. A seat? That's cool. Do I want a Kappa Cannoneer? Not yet. I'm just going to take the Strix back this turn. The Kappa Cannoneer is how I'm going to win this. Like, I'm going to sit behind Construct Tokens with Kappa Cannoneer being the thing that attacks every turn. But I think I just wait one more turn cycle on this. See what my redraw is. I have some really good redraws, such as Urza's Saga. I don't think I play Emery. I've still got plenty of good stuff in the graveyard to bring back. And I'll pass turn. That is suspending a Crashing Footfalls. That's totally fine. That does give me an incentive to kind of get the show on the road and not just sit back forever. I have a Chalice of the Void that I can find relatively easily. Shadow Spear starts to make attacks very good very quickly. I can also just Kappa Cannoneer. Let's Kappa. And we can improvise with Lotus Petal. I'll tap the Strix here. This effectively enters as a 5-5. Five five, and I'll start murdering my opponent with this. I don't think I want to take an attack here. I could take one and trade for double Rhino or Rhino Shardless Shardless. Maybe that's fine, actually. Yeah, I think I'm okay with trading one token for three bodies with a Kappa Cannoneer in play. Oh, sure, I can trade for two Rhinos. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Goodbye, Rhinos. And I still have two valid defensive blockers after all that. So life's fine. Still three counters on this. Opponent can Wasteland Seat to shrink my Construct by one. Like they're opting not to in respect of Urza Saga. Love drawing that Force of Will. One, two, three, four mana. Play Demir Signet. And also just Karn. Let's just Karn. So all four mana Karn. Karn minus. This makes Kappa Cannoneer unblockable. Then we'll go ahead and redeploy a Lotus Petal from Graveyard. 
This turns the construct token into an 8-8, eight, eight, meaning it's pretty good in combat. I think I am comfortable firing in with both of these. I'll leave the Strix back. The Strix attack is unlikely to change the clock, whereas the Strix helps um, blocks on Karn through something like a single removal spell. Right. We even talked about that on their turn. I think I'm ultimately okay with this. Like, I'm trading my Construct token kind of for the Wasteland as well. And I hedged against some sort of single removal spell situation. Two counters on this. All right, the Karn is still safe. We probably start getting into present lethal territory this turn um, without thinking about it very much. So this is a 7-7 seven, seven. play. Or sorry, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Play this, it's a 9-9. Nine, nine. Play Shadow Spear from Yard. That'll be 10-10. Ten, ten. So this creature alone is lethal. And we put up a win. We're going to game three now. I again, don't think I want Dismember for Rhinos. I don't think I want Blue Elemental Blast. It's like pretty Minsk and Boo specific. Doesn't really do anything against Violent Outburst. I think this is the configuration I'm on. Seat, Opal, Petal. Um, this is, this is going to be a keep, I think. Opponent's also on 7. I have Force of Will for the first set of Rhinos. And this card is pretty solid. It is just going to be a draw a card every turn signal, every turn cycle sort of situation. Let's pay, play both 0 drops. I can play Strix while holding up Metallic Rebuke. Or no, I can't. Two artifacts. Okay, yeah, then I, I will just jam. A call per call. I imagine that I force of will to protect this if my opponent forces, and I pitch metallic rebuke to keep Strix around. Uh, let's let's fight. Force of vigor. Well, shit. So I will get to kind of trigger this every turn. I will put the underground C into my hand. Thank you. This is a 1-5 versus Rhinos. That is definitely relevant. Let's see what my opponent can do. Just fetch. That's a little weird. So I'll trigger this with Seat and get a card at my end step. I don't think I'm attacking. I think I want to play around like double spirit guide, produce Rhinos. I like the four life is very important. I'll take a vault. Like, some portion of the time my opponent does not have that here, and I, like, miss a point of damage. A singular point of damage is not what this game is about. This game is about me not dying to rhinos. And everything else is secondary. Alright, here they come. All expected stuff there. My opponent goes past a Force of Vigor. You're a card late, but not unappreciated. Um, small mistake on my end. I should probably play Underground Sea there over Vault of Whis uh, probably play Underground Sea over Vault of Whispers. It's like assuming that the Baleful Strix resolves, though, which is, like, not guaranteed. Chalice or Seat? I think I'll take Chalice. I would like to stop future waves of Rhinos. I can stop a wave this turn, but then I want to be able to Chalice to keep them from coming down. And then hopefully I can just kind of ride this to victory. I'll take the uh, obvious blocks here. I do still take a lightning bolt worth of damage this turn. But I take a rhino off the table, which is great. We'll see if the last card is a way to produce rhinos. This is one mana. So let's start by seeing if my chalice resolves. Okay, cool. I need to keep a blue card in hand. I think Emery is significantly better than Strix. Because Emery just represents Strix and friends from Graveyard. And lots of friends at that. 
and we'll go ahead and drop the Shadow Spear as well. Uh, this card Fox, folks. Like, I am very impressed by the work this is doing. I don't remember, I think I mulliganed to five, and I just have drawn a card every turn cycle with this. And if we have Urza Saga, like, sometimes we can also get one on our opponent's turn. That's weird. I think I force this because it just represents an immediate card, so it's just trading essentially one of one of my cards for Petty Theft and the Brazen Borrower on the backside. This makes me a little bit worse versus something like a Merktide Regent that comes down in this next turn cycle immediately, but I think this is a very good tempo play. I'll take the card. Arn, the Emery doesn't really do a lot right now. Like, sometimes my opponent draws uh, a Fire Ice and removes this, and then, like, I wish I had the other Emery, but this is a strong play otherwise. I, I don't care about my opponent drawing Wasteland. I, in fact, think they're probably not supposed to use that Wasteland. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. You can attack me for two right now. I think you also make this attack before playing the Wasteland. Then there's a little more fear in it instead of me having perfect information. Oh, uh, sure. I think you want to be able to play a top deck Minskin Boo. Uh, so that is not currently playable. Let's Emery. I think I'll take Strix. I think Strix and Demir Signet are both reasonable. Draw my card. Get another land. The land's actually really good. That means Karn can happen next turn. And to stop the chip attacks, I can consider paying two life to just equip this here. Which I think I'll do. I think that's worth it. Uh, no attacks necessary, and we're just going to kind of keep doing stuff. I don't think I need Tezzeret. I think I'm just going to take the other land. Like, the Tezzeret is a perfectly meaningful and reasonable card, but with Karn in hand and other good stuff going on here, I think that's just not what the game is about right now. Uh, yep, this is fine. So I can now Pithing Needle Minskin Boo so that that's not a live top deck for my opponent. All right. Am I ready to Kappa Cannoneer? I don't think so. Let's shut off Minsk and Boo as a top deck. We're going to name Minsk and Boo. Play Seat. Uh, we're fine taking this extra damage to do the Karnstruct. The Karnstruct is absolutely massive. And at this point, Minsk and Boo is off. Um, still not going to attack. I don't think that makes sense. Minsk and Boo is off. Merktide Regent isn't particularly effective. Uh, Rhinos are off. Uh, we are in a just massively favored position. I can start gaining life next turn. Force of Vigor is one of the better things that my opponent could have that could spin the game a bit. All right. Yaw. Yeah. I think I'm just going to go ahead and move this to this construct immediately. And I think I take an attack at that point and see what happens and then plan the rest of the turn accordingly. I can create a larger attack than just this, but doing so might put me in a position where I lose two constructs to something like a Force of Vigor rather than just one. So Chalice on zero is gone. This construct is gone. Uh, this is fine. So I will now Karn minus again. Chalice on zero from Graveyard. One, two. Yeah. Uh, target that. Cast it in a second. I want a Lotus Petal first. Then redeploy Chalice on zero. Then Kappa Cannoneer, one, two, three, four, five, improvise, six. I can go ahead and equip Kappa Cannoneer. 
I'm paying two life, which is totally fine. I'm walled up pretty well. Take a land. Uh, and, you know, this is just a matter of time. I've got kind of everything covered. Yeah, uh, I imagine that I am now presenting lethal damage in this turn cycle. I'm not going to think about it too hard. I'm just going to click on cards. So, Vault, grow Kappa by one. Make Construct, grow Kappa by one. Make Karn, grow Kappa by one. With this ability, the 12 12, A2 life. Equip this here. Uh, Emery, target, I don't know, a Thought Monitor. Thought Monitor for one mana. Draw two cards, scale up Kappa Cannoneer. Can't play that out. This has to be blocked or it's lethal. At this point, I'm fine stringing, sw swinging Strix in as well. Opponent takes their obligatory blocks as to not die. And this still puts my opponent at lethal. Uh, that was a very impressive last round. So how do we feel about this one at the end of the day? We went 1-4? Honestly? Honestly, I don't feel that bad about the deck. Maybe I should have built around this card? Like, maybe this is the new Tesserator? Like, this card was incredibly powerful. Just every turn, look at two, draw one of them. Like, this plus Emery is a very real engine that I might be looking at for real 8-cast. Now, this was the first draft of a, a deck. You know, this was me trying to rebuild Tezzeret. Tezzerator, rather. Um, Craig, I hope you're happy with this league. I, I certainly am. Some cards underperformed in this league. I cut Welding Jar just about every round. Didn't really end up recurring Bobble. I still maybe need zero drop artifacts. Like, they do a lot for the deck. Maybe I don't need two Demir Signets. Maybe I go down on Thought Monitors, given that we're in a Bowmaster world. But I like this, like, two thing that I've got going on with this deck, where I've got, like, two Akal Pakals, two Tezzerets, two Thought Monitors, two Kappa Cannoneers that just give my opponent a lot of different things to think about. Um, playing a few more leagues will probably refine the deck. Uh, land count, I'm not sure if you need the full 19. Uh, especially if you end up doing something like Trimming Thought Monitor for some more early game cards of some kind. I generally speaking really liked the stuff that I had access to. This is the rare I did poorly with the deck, but I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I think something that comes from playing this deck list a few more times probably results in a really powerful FNM or local level event deck. So thumbs up here despite the fact that I just got bodied. And if you need to buy... The first among equals. Check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save a little bit on your next order. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. See ya!